I have a dream. You can't connect the dots looking forward. One small step for man. You can only connect them looking backwards. One giant leap for mankind. I am the greatest. You need to have support. How many are turning to starting their own businesses? Decision is the ultimate power. The greatest bands need great producers. Music fans bought more than one billion individual songs from online services such as Apple's iTunes. Trick yourself out of habits and, and find a new angle. Anything is possible. If it feels right, move forward. If it doesn't feel right, don't do it. Every dream starts small. Good morning, entrepreneurs around the world. This is our time, and our planet will be our playing ground. We entrepreneurs will change our societies like no one has done it in the history of our world. Welcome to The Entrepreneur Show. My name is Anthony Lacopo. And I'll be your host for this show where the sole focus is on the best job in the world, entrepreneurship. Every week, we take an honest look at key question relating to entrepreneurship. I try to break down the myths around it to find the real deal. And finally, try to share my experience on the quest- with the question and try to see how I dealt with these issues and what was my benefits or the decisions that I've taken in my, my life? The objective is not to give you answers about what's right and wrong, but to share experiences that hopefully could help entrepreneurs make better decisions in their journey to change the world. This week's question is a question that can be pretty sensitive, but I think it's a question really important, and it's a factor that truly can have a fate in the success of any entrepreneurship project. And the question goes as follows. Can a family survive a startup? What should come first, family or business? When an entrepreneur decides to bet on himself and launch his new project, does he put his family second and in danger of a breakup? I know many entrepreneurs that have succeeded tremendously in business, but failing in their personal life. And that comes to the question of what is true success? One of the most common regrets I hear from experienced entrepreneurs is the regret of not being there for their children while they were growing up. Is it possible to imagine or to think that a family can be happily ever after while one of its members starts a new company? Are the rewards of entrepreneurship worth losing everything else? And finally, is it possible to combine a successful startup with family and have it all? Those are many questions, but they are are questions and it's a reality that many entrepreneurs face and they have a difficult decision to make and and it's so hard to to plan entrepreneurship and how you manage your time and family that I think it could be an interesting uh, topic for this week. Now during the broadcast I'll be available like usual on Twitter at Anthony Lacopo to answer questions, feedback, if you want to interact don't be shy. I'll be there to answer them. Also before we proceed with the topic of the week, let's kind of look at the key takeaways from last week's show. And last week, the question was pretty interesting because we're in an environment today, in our days, where education is so important and many, many people are investing a lot of money in their education. And the question was, was education overrated but for the entrepreneurial success? to ensure entrepreneurial success. Because some of the greatest innovation in recent history have taken place in or around academic institution, including, like I was mentioning, Google, Facebooks. And at the same time, some of the most successful entrepreneurs in recent history, like Guy La Liberté, Richard Branson, Steve Jobs, are almost proud to proclaim their academic shortcomings. So in a time when knowledge, initiative, and ambition often collide with each other, 
the question becomes clear. Do we need education to have a successful entrepreneurial career? So from that topic last week, th these are the different key takeaways that I think were important. So the first point was that we're, we're kind of brought up from a very early age that we're kind of this, in this system where we need to go to school, study hard, be, have a career, and you know, then continue uh, with our career for the rest of our lives. But nothing in that system permits us to think towards entrepreneurship. So I think it's really important that parents give their young children that, that opening, that seed of ambition, that seed of creativity and the possibility of dreaming, because that will help them see that there's another option aside from what is currently the system that we're in, this studying education and the, have a career. Also, another important key takeaway was that entrepreneurs are not defined by diplomas or by the school they attend. I think they're defined by two words, tenaciousness and the raw capacity to learn. I think those are key ingredients that every entrepreneur has. Also, we should never judge people based on their schooling, but by the power of their characters, because that defies the standard. I, was, I went to do a, 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 a conference this last week about entrepreneurship and I was speaking to a, a, you know, about 50 people about entrepreneurship and about my experience. And after the presentation, somebody came to me and told me this quote, which I found awesome and would like to share with you. And it goes like, like this. He goes, your attitude defines your altitude. So at a young age, it's so important that our, the children, our children, have the possibility to develop that entrepreneurial attitude. Because once they have that, sky is the limit. But also, it's important to go to school. Because school, like I mentioned in my case, gave me a plan B. It gave me the comfort, the credibility, that if ever my entrepreneurial project wasn't going to work, which I knew was very little percentage, but if ever... I knew I could have relied on a great education that I had gotten to have a great career in, ahead of me. So school is, is also very important. But in the past, you know, school, like we say, we're taught, you know, to go to school, to have a career, and it's very important. But we have to understand that in the world that we live in today with Internet, with the way we network with people virtually, the way we learn through different organizations, associations, like school, I don't think it's like it used to be for entrepreneurs. I don't think you need to be sitting in a school bench to learn how to be, become a better entrepreneurship or to learn key theories or processes. Or... So I think with today, with the internet, we don't have the same need of going to school. So it's really important that when we do go to school, like I've done, but when I did my MBA, when I did my law degree, my engineering degree, there was reasons behind it. It wasn't because just to go to school. The reason was because I wanted to gain certain tools, certain thought of, of, of thinking, pro, you know, learn how to think to solve certain issues, whether in finance, marketing, legal, technical. That was the reason. And I thought with those tools, I would have been a better entrepreneur. And it's really important for people when they do take programs, that they understand why they're taking it. And they understand if that program will make them a better entrepreneur. And another key learning, which I got from attending a conference from Richard Branson, is that school is important, but students in, in our days today get indebted so much that when they're ready to, for their entrepreneurial project, they're scared to lose all of their assets. And that's one of the biggest problems because a lot of entrepreneurs succeed when they, have not, when they have nothing to lose. So it's really important that young people are aware that they shouldn't be getting too much indebted at an early stage because the day will come when they want to start a project. And the less they have as debts or assets that they're afraid to lose, the more free they'll feel to take over their project. 
And finally, we looked at different entrepreneurs that succeeded without going to school. Let me recap a couple of them. There was Charles Culpepper, who was the owner and CEO of Coca-Cola, who dropped out of high school. There was Henry Ford that dropped out as well from Ford Motors. Bill Gates, as we know, Guy La Liberté, Michael Dell dropped out to start a computer business. So there's many people that dropped out and became really successful. So school does not guarantee you that you're going to be a great entrepreneur, but it gives you a great plan B if ever it doesn't work. So there's, there's always good and bad in everything we do. It's just really important that we're comfortable with those decisions and that we don't get influenced by the systems that are in place to make our decisions. Because we succeed very well when we don't follow the system, where we dare to get out of the system and go full speed ahead with something that we truly believe in. And finally, we concluded with an article that I read from Peter Thiel, the Facebook billionaire and PayPal co-founder, where he dared to create a new program that defied the traditional system. The program was called 20 Under 20, which he found 20 young teenagers and invested $100,000 in each one of them to start a business instead of going to school. Pretty daring, don't you think? Let's go to commercial and we'll get back with the question of the week. What's going on behind the scenes with your favorite Voice America show or host? For the latest news, visit the iRadio blog at iradioblog.com. Hi, I'm your customer. We've been together for a while, but sometimes it feels like you take me for granted. Sure, you answer when I call. You tell me things will be all right, but I feel like we're growing apart. Maybe it's time we, you know, start seeing other people. Your customers have more options than ever to take their business across the street. And many believe that the competition is more eager to have their business than you are. What are you doing to make sure your customers are happy, satisfied, loyal? Please leave a message after the tone. Can you send another technician? You guys are the worst company. Can I speak to the supervisor? This isn't working. How many times are we going to... What is wrong with you guys? I mean, can we fix this once and for all? Do I have a contract with you? This is ridiculous. No, it doesn't work. It just doesn't. Thank you for calling. Don't confuse customer satisfaction with customer service. Utopia Image helps you map out the entire client interaction and provides an organic approach to make sure that the issues that make your customers unhappy are really being fixed in real time. Call Utopia Image 1-866-242-5592 or utopiaimage.com. We're making it easier to listen to the Voice America Talk Radio Network wherever you go. In addition to listening live, you can check out information about your favorite talk show hosts, discover new talk show personalities, add shows to your list of favorites, and listen to all our show archives on demand. All from your iPhone, BlackBerry, or Android. Download it from the Apple App Store, BlackBerry App World, or Android Market, and get ready to tune in. The Voice America mobile app, powered by Aircast. Entrepreneurial Insights is your weekly excursion into the world of business ownership. Presented by Sunbelt Business Brokers, the leading business brokerage and intermediary firm in the world, Entrepreneurial Insights will examine critical issues that impact both existing and prospective business owners. If you own or want to own a small business, listen for Entrepreneurial Insights with John Davies, Pino Boccinello, and Matt Ottaway. Fridays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Business Channel. When it comes to business, you'll find the experts here. Voice America Business Network. Welcome back to the Entrepreneur Show. This is Anthony Lacopo. Before proceeding with the question of the week, let me conclude the first segment with a quote that I had last week. We are all born with a gift. The challenge is to discover it and having the guts 
to bet on it. Now, what does that quote mean? It means that we all have to work hard to find that gift. And for certain people, that gift can be discovered by going to school. Other people will start up businesses, will work on, on music, sports. It doesn't matter. What's important is that we don't feel like we all have to follow the same system to get where we think we should be. We should feel free and flexible to do whatever it takes to discover that gift. And like I mentioned, certain people will invest a lot of time in school and they'll figure out what they're great at, while others might spend most of their time doing sports or arts or starting a business. The bottom line is that we as human beings should never judge one another based on everyone else who decides to take a certain road. People who take their own roads in their own hand have more chances of being happy at the end of the road, even if there's ups and downs, because in life, there's always ups and downs. But when you do what you're great at, nothing can beat that. So that concludes the first segment. Now let's get back to the question of the week. Can a family survive a startup? What should come first, family or business? When an entrepreneur decides to bet on himself and launch his new project, does he put his family second and in danger of a breakup? Many entrepreneurs have succeeded tremendously in business while failing with their personal life. And one of the most common regret I hear from experienced entrepreneurs is the regret of not being there for their children while they were growing up. So is it possible to think that a family can be happily ever after while one of its members starts a new company? Are the rewards of entrepreneurship worth losing everything else? Is it possible to combine a successful startup with family and have it all? Those are pretty important questions. And they're very sensitive too because we kind of mix between personal satisfaction and the well-being of our families. And it's so hard to mix these two together. Now, in the next couple of minutes, I'll explain my experience. And, of course, this question is for, relates to people that have started businesses or they want to start businesses, but, you know, they already have a family or they have a partner, they have kids. And it's, I could tell you my experience, it was pretty hard. And it creates a lot of pressure. And the only way to succeed is that both partners are on the same wavelength. And that makes it even harder when each one of the partners have their own careers. But in my experience, to have a successful marriage and a successful family life while starting a business... It starts very early on, and it starts with, as a couple, of deciding that we are living one life, and that that one life is the same life, and that we're working together to build something we both are proud of, and that decisions are not made individualistic for ourselves. When I met my wife, I met my wife at a very young age. I was 16 years old. So I grew up with my wife. And one thing was clear is that I had tremendous ambitions. And my wife was ready to support my dreams. And I think that is crucial. And you, see, you notice that at a very early stage. And you can know that even before starting a business. You need to be able to support each other, like we say, through thick and thin, no matter what the outcomes are. In life, we can never confirm the outcomes. We could all always hope for good outcomes, but we don't know. We could only be disappointed if we hope to have only monetary outcomes. If you base yourself and your projects on monetary outcomes, 
you could get disappointed very quickly. Instead, if you base it on the ex potential experiences you'll be able to share, you're most probably going to be much more happier, no matter if there's ups and downs, which most probably there will be, because there's, in anything we do, there's always ups and downs. And I think for me, there was really two key things that I think made my relationship with my wife and my family successful. And the first key was when me and my wife had a, a discussion about, you know, what was our ambitions? What did she want to do in her life? What did I want to do in my life? And we kind of concluded where her drive was really to make sure that our kids was well educated and taking care of our kids while I invested in my career and my future competencies in order to be able to strive to bring together a lifestyle that we envisioned for, for my wife and for our family. So that discussion was not done once I started the company. It was done way back before, even before I started school. And that's when I knew that we stand, you know, in, we, we had, like I mentioned, one life and we were living the same life and that we were going to help each other to build our family and to have the lifestyle we both dreamed for our kids and ourselves. And I think that is crucial because we're pulling all together. And that also gave me the confidence of starting my company. And that is why I felt like even if I didn't tell her and I, and I didn't put that burden on her when I left and I didn't tell her anything because I knew we had that discussion and that she had put the fate on me and she believed me that I could succeed. So that was one of the first key, I would say, that helped me and helped us have a great family life while starting my company. The second key is that we both agreed that it's impossible to think that we could want or we could have everything we want day one. See, life is not that way. You need to work and you need to plan. And you cannot expect that you have everything at, at once in your life. Materialistic, uh, vacations, a big house, the car, etc. You can't have all that. It takes time. You need to work for it. You need to plan it. And everything comes at their own time. And we both truly believe that. And that's why I had planned everything. And we both agreed from when I started school, you know, my second school, uh, when I started my MBA in 2001 in my law, is that everything was planned saying, you know, I'll start with my schooling, get the tools that I needed. The second step was what? Is launching my company. Well, while you do that, you cannot expect to have an amazing lifestyle because you need to put your focus where it's important, knowing that later on in life, you'll reap the benefits from it. And that is something crucial that we both agreed on. So we invested, I invested a lot of time in my education, and then I invested a lot of time to starting my business. Also, you might not think as an investment, but my wife throughout all that, invested a lot too. Because during all those years, she was patient and she gave me the space that I needed to study, the space that I needed once I started my business. And that's crucial. We kind of forget our partners sometimes and we think of that we invest. But all these years when I was going to school in the weekends, at night in the week, working in, during the weekdays, my wife was patient and she was supporting me. Why? Because she knew it was an investment. Why? Because she knew she didn't need that materialistic lifestyle today. We were planning, we're working hard together now, so later on in life, we'll get everything we desired and have our family have the lifestyle that they wanted. So it's crucial that both partners really truly understand that when one invests time, money, the other one follows too. They're different investments, but they all invest. And that was, that was key to our success. Now let's move forward about a year after I started my company. So now we're maybe in the year 2007, and I think that's when, you know, for the first year and a half, my wife understood, you know, that I was putting so much energy and effort in starting the company. But after a certain while, the burden was starting to, 
to, to, to, to go on myself and on my wife because, like I mentioned it, our surroundings were not entrepreneurs. I, we didn't have a lot of entrepreneurs in our families and friends. We, it was kind of the first entrepreneurial experience in our family. So we had no reference point. So my wife, her reference point was kind of her friends, their husbands, who were all professionals, but they were not entrepreneurs. So it's hard to compare the time or the, 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 the effort that I needed to put in with other people. So that created a lot of, a lot of uh, strain in our relationship because I was investing, especially on the second year when my job was getting more of a uh, being in different you know, uh, social activities, meetings, networking, traveling. It was really getting hard for my wife now because she's been investing since 2001 and now we're in 2007, 2008, and she still hasn't got any signs of, you know, the benefits. Let's go to commercial and I'll continue my story. Be sure to friend us on Facebook. You can do it right now. Visit Facebook.com forward slash Voice America or search for us at keyword Voice America. Hi, I'm your customer. We've been together for a while, but sometimes it feels like you take me for granted. Sure, you answer when I call. You tell me things will be all right, but I feel like we're growing apart. Maybe it's time we, you know, start seeing other people. Your customers have more options than ever to take their business across the street, and many believe that the competition is more eager to have their business than you are. What are you doing to make sure your customers are happy, satisfied, loyal? Please leave a message after the tone. Can you send another technician? You guys are the worst company. Can I speak to the supervisor? This isn't working. How many times are we going to... What is wrong with you guys? I mean, can we fix this once and for all? Do I have a contract with you? This is ridiculous. No, it doesn't work. It just doesn't. Thank you for calling. Don't confuse customer satisfaction with customer service. Utopia Image helps you map out the entire client interaction and provides an organic approach to make sure that the issues that make your customers unhappy are really being fixed in real time. Call Utopia Image, 1-866-242-5592 or utopiaimage.com. Follow the Voice America Talk Radio Network on Twitter. We're at Voice America TRN. You'll get the latest fix on what's happening with our shows, this week's featured guests, and general happenings that you should know about at the Voice America Talk Radio Network. Now you don't have to miss anything when you're away from your home or office. Just go to twitter.com forward slash Voice America TRN. RN, or follow along with us at Voice America TRN, the Voice America Talk Radio Network. We're on the cutting edge of social media. Can you keep up? There's a course offered on 7th Wave Network that you never saw offered in college. One that provides information on how to transform ancient wisdom teachings into everyday life. You'll learn how to create from your spirit and explore the world with all of your senses. Participation is encouraged. Enroll in Spirituality 101, the course you can't afford to miss with your host, Reverend Norma. Class is in session every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 12 noon Pacific Time in your favorite classroom, 7th Wave Network. When it comes to business, you'll find the experts here. Voice America Business Network. Welcome back to The Entrepreneur Show. This is Anthony Lacopo, and today we're talking about family and business. The question was, can a family survive a startup? When an entrepreneur decides to bet on himself and launch his new project, does it put his family second and in danger of a breakup? Many entrepreneurs have succeeded tremendously in business while failing with their personal life. One of the common regrets that I hear most of the time from experienced entrepreneurs is that they regret of not being there for their children while they were growing up. Are the rewards of entrepreneurship worth losing everything else? 
And finally, is it possible to combine a successful startup with fam family and have it all? So that's the topic we're discussing today. And I started with the first two segments with my experience in starting my business and how is that affecting my family life. Now, I left the last segment talking about how now my business was starting to grow and I was getting more and more implicated in it and being needed to travel much more, uh, assisting in different activities, um, late nights, going for lunches with people. Now I'm starting to get this kind of lifestyle where I'm very, you know, getting becoming much more social than I was accustomed to. And like you have to come back and remember when I was mentioning from 2001 till about 2006, I was focused on work, school, and family. I had no social life. And now all of a sudden, a couple years into my business, I'm starting to have this social life where nice lunches, nice events, traveling, and I'm doing all this on my own. And that's starting to kind of having an effect, a bad impact on my wife because she's kind of supporting me through all these years. And now all of a sudden she felt like I just left and starting to fly on my own with my own project and she didn't feel any attachment to this project anymore. And that's what caused a lot of friction. It caused friction between my wife and I because she kind of thought I was doing too much social activity. She couldn't comprehend why I was doing it and why the need for it. Because like I mentioned, we had no reference point. She couldn't have talked to other wives that their husbands were entrepreneurs or she couldn't relate because we didn't really have our surroundings. There weren't many entrepreneurs. And another negative point was that all these events, traveling and social activities that was involved in trying to network and growing my business, another bad effect that it had is that when I was home, I didn't have the energy to, 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 to go with my wife on activities that she had planned with her friends and have that social life. I just wanted to come home and just relax and be with my kids and kind of you know, be at home. And that also created some friction as well. So in, in the year 2000, Nine around 2009, we were kind of that you know uh, tough environment where you know I, I'm trying to manage now my, my my family life and my business, and that's when it really kind of came to me, and I noticed that now the, the my business was really having a negative impact on my on my family life, which it's something that I tried very strong not to make happen, and that finally something happened in 2009, and it was that my wife. She was, a stay, she was at home. She has an education degree, but she decided to stay home with her kids to make sure she, she could be a gr good support for them. And at a certain point, when our kids started to go to school, she came to me and she asked me if she could come and work with me you know, at our company. And I could tell you honestly, my, my first reflex, reflex was that you know, uh, it wasn't a good idea. And I spoke about the situation with my mentors and my coach and certain of my surrounding or entrepreneurial friends. And everybody had kind of a negative answer to that or a negative vibe saying, Anthony, it's not a good thing when you mix you know, your, your wife with the, the, the company. So all my surroundings kind of you know, didn't think it was a good thing. So that's what you know, I was telling my wife that I, you know, I wasn't kind of keen on that and I didn't find it was a good thing. And for about six months, you know, it kind of created really, um, really stress on us because she wanted to come and work. I, I, I was scared because, you know, I was kind of people around me telling me, Anthony, it's not a great idea. And she thought I didn't want her to come and work because she thought that I had a certain, you know, maybe character and that I was going to get influenced if she would be in the office and, and so forth. But my, my perspective was really that, you know, I was scared, you know, based on what people were telling me that if she would come, it would have kind of, you know, create an environment not favorable to, you know, uh, to the business. But after six months, uh, I, could, I could say that I stopped listening to my surrounding and I remembered, I remembered one thing that, you know, we had discussed a long time ago and that we've decided to have one life and that we live both the same life. And when I realized that, I stopped listening to my surroundings and I took the decision of for sure that, you know, I wanted her to come and work with me, you know, and kind, you know, and, and that was really, you know, a, a big, a big decision that, you know, that we took. And, and I, I would say that today it was one of the best decisions that I've taken in the last five years that I have a business. 
And it made me realize also that this project that we had in our hands, we had both invested so much time and effort during the last almost you know, eight to 10 years. And that I kind of lost track of that at the beginning of my business. And I thought it was kind of my own project. And then I realized that she was kind of my angel investors. We all know that term angel investors in, in, in business. Well, she was kind of my angel investor from 2001 to now. And when I realized that, she would, it was natural that she had to take part in this project. And when she took part of this project and she came and worked with me on this, on this company, it completely changed the whole dynamic of our relationship. And from that moment on, everything has just been going great. Why? Because now that she's in the company and she sees what I, what I work, what I do, the stress that I'm in, the, the, the people that come and meet me, the customers, the demands, and that she's involved because now she takes care of, of most of you know, the, the processes, the financials and you know, the pay and all that, those details that are really, truly important. So she understands the dynamic of being an entrepreneur. And that helped me greatly because when I come home, when I'm tired, when I'm stressed, she understands why and she, and she could relate. And I would tell you, it, it gave me such a boost in times where it was so hard uh, business, the stress of you know, managing employees, the day-to-day of letting go employees that were you know, close to the company because they were there for a long time, of customers of not paying in time, the finance, the banking. She understood all that. And she was a great support. She was kind of my rock. And I think every entrepreneur need that. And I would tell you, that's, what I th- that's why I truly think that I was successful in combining my family life with, with, with my company. And today, my kids, even when I do long hours and I work a lot of days where I travel, it's kind of, it's, they, don't, they don't feel like I'm not there because they're involved. My kids come to my work when they don't have school or, or, or in the weekends they come with me. They understand you know, what I'm doing. And that's all because of my wife. She brings them to work and she, they make, she makes them see what we do for a living. When I work late at night, the kids understand that I have meetings and they know why I have meetings because you know, we own a company. And all this dynamic of you know, focusing on its one project for all of our family and we're all invested in it makes it much easier to manage you know, the demands, the extremely demands of business compared to the extremely demands of family. And all in unison, I, I'm very proud to say that we, you know, we're doing, the, the relationship with my kids and my wife has been tremendous. And, and it's kind of, again, moving out of that traditional system where I come, where you know, they say, you know, it's, it, where I, w- I was told by a lot of people that, Anthony, it's not a great idea to work with your wife. And you know what? There's maybe hundreds of examples that it did not work out for people working with their spouse or their partners. But for me, it worked out. And it it is working tremendously. And it worked out because we are partners in this project. And we both realized that we maybe invested differently in this project, but we both invested the same amount. And that's what's important. And once you realize that, and you realize it, that all together you have you're living that one life and it's the same life success will always be there no matter what it's not always great we have ups and downs in the business and she understands and she sees it and it helps us get through it so i think my experience of bringing my wife in the business was a very positive one and because again we planned it like I mentioned, there was key elements from when I met my wife to when we decided, you know, who's going to take the leadership in kind of, you know, uh, the career and who's going to take the leadership of the, the family, to making sure the family has everything it needs. And once that it's accomplished, then you could both advance in the same direction. And once, once the project launched, I realized that that project was ours and that she had as much rights that I did to get invested in it. And I think all that makes that, you know, we're living the life that we're living today. And also what helps is that at a certain point, we need to take back a bit. And it comes to the philosophy where, you know, some people think that entrepreneurs should get paid, you know, first or should get paid last. I think after all the investments we've done, it's important that at a certain point, 
both partners start seeing a bit the benefits and re start receiving you know the, these benefits and after a couple of years so in 2010 when i start recuperating the investment or the, the that i did initially in the company to pay off our debt that came, also gave our, uh, my wife myself kind of a boost to, to start at least now we're seeing the benefits and we're progressing. And it's really important because you cannot only focus on investing, investing, investing without reaping a bit of the benefits a bit at a time because it kind of gets you exhausted. Let's go to a commercial now and we'll finish the fourth segment with my story and a couple of articles I read. We're making it easier to listen to the Voice America Talk Radio Network live wherever you go on iPhone, BlackBerry, or Android. Download it from the Apple iTunes App Store, BlackBerry App World, or Android Market. Hi, I'm your customer. We've been together for a while, but sometimes it feels like you take me for granted. Sure, you answer when I call. You tell me things will be all right, but I feel like we're growing apart. Maybe it's time we, you know, start seeing other people. Your customers have more options than ever to take their business across the street, and many believe that the competition is more eager to have their business than you are. What are you doing to make sure your customers are happy, satisfied, loyal? Please leave a message after the tone. Can you send another technician? You guys are the worst company. Can I speak to the supervisor? This isn't working. How many times are we going to... What is wrong with you guys? I mean, can we fix this once and for all? Do I have a contract with you? This is ridiculous. No, it doesn't work. It just doesn't. Thank you for calling. Don't confuse customer satisfaction with customer service. Utopia Image helps you map out the entire client interaction and provides an organic approach to make sure that the issues that make your customers unhappy are really being fixed in real time. Call Utopia Image 1 866 242 5592 or utopiaimage.com. Now there's a new destination for video content voiceamerica.tv, just like our radio channels and so much more. Voice America Variety, Health and Wellness, Business, Sports, Green Talk, Power Up Motorsports, and Seventh Wave Network now have their own video channel components. Plus, check out exclusive programming, including movies, music, educational courses, science and history, current events, and short features. High definition, premier quality programs available. 24-7. VoiceAmerica.tv. If you think you've seen online TV like this before, let us surprise you. Technology is intended to improve our lives and solve the world's problems. But technology in itself is a complex myriad of concepts, ideas, and security. How do we sort it all out? Tune in to Technology Today with host Ajay Gupta. The program will go inside the world of technology with innovators, engineers, CEOs, and government officials. Our topics will include green technology, healthcare technology, and cybersecurity. Listen every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Business Channel. Welcome back to The Entrepreneur Show. This is Antti Lacopo, and today we're dealing with family and business. Can a family survive a startup? What should come first, family or business? When an entrepreneur decides to bet on himself and launch his new project, does he put his family second and in danger of a breakup? Many entrepreneurs have succeeded tremendously in business while failing with their personal life. One of the most common regrets we hear from experienced entrepreneurs is the regret of not being there for their children while they were growing up. Is it possible to think that a family can be happily ever after while one of its members starts a new company? Are the rewards of entrepreneurship worth losing everything else? Is it possible to combine a successful startup with family and have it all? So we've been talking about family and business during the last three segments. Now I'd like to talk about another step in, our, in my life that I've taken in the last couple of years that tremendously helped myself evolve as an entrepreneur and better manage 
the requirement that a family has and how to manage both together. And it happened a couple of years ago when I joined EO, which is Entrepreneurial Organizations. EO is a group worldwide. So there's chapters of EOs in most of big cities around the world. And their chapters, we have one here in Montreal, are, are based with entrepreneurs. So it's entrepreneurs that meet every month, once a month, and discuss about their issues, whether it's personal, family, uh, business. And that, by joining EO, I've joined a, a group of eight other entrepreneurs that we've met now for the last two years, once a month. And we kind of made some bonds together where, and we have this respect for one another, and we, we, we feel like we could tell each other anything. And because we all have experiences. And that's where I got that concept from my show that I'm doing now. So it's, it's about experience sharing. And EO has brought a lot to my life because I'm able to, to share my experiences, but also learn from my other fellow entrepreneurs and their experiences and how they've managed. And that support was great for me. And not only that, it was great for my wife too, because now we have kind of the support system where she has, and she has met my, my colleagues, my other entrepreneurs' friends, wives, or partners, and they're working together. And so they talk, and, and they kind of cut, could have discussions, and it also gave a lot, a good sounding board for my wife. So EO is a great organization, and it brought a lot to both of us, which I, I don't know if any entrepreneurs out there know about this association, but sh you should really, truly investigate because it's a great, it kind of becomes kind of a board of advisors that gives you a support system that helps you deal with your issues, but through experience sharing. So it's a, it's a great organization, and it really helped us, you know, evolve uh, with our business, with our relationship, and, and really betting on what's truly important. Now, I, I did a couple of research, and I was looking on the internet and getting some quotes, you know, how, of how people were dealing, you know, with businesses and, uh, and their family life. And I would like to, to maybe shed a couple of quotes or, or um, phrases that some people said. And there, there's one that I mentioned on, on, on a special website that he said, one of the biggest bonuses for an entrepreneur with a great partner at home is that it forces you to think more clearly and learn how to sell your ideas. Almost every idea I could not explain well to my partner turned out to be a steaming dud. So that was one, something truly interesting also that I found uh, through my research. Something else that I found was kind of the maybe four key elements to try to have a success with business and family. So the first key element that I, that I saw on, on this website was business is second to family. So no business is worth sacrificing your family for, and in fact, Power, support, and inspiration can be derived directly from your home team. And that's so true because the bottom line, well, for me, if at home we are not happy, if things are not going well at home, everything I do exterior from home is not worth it. The success that we're having with business is really not, doesn't mean anything to me if at home people are not happy and enjoying their lives. The second key was to communication with your partner is crucial. So like I mentioned, to be able to communicate transparently and openly so that both of you could understand what both of you are feeling and try to deal with it. So he continues by saying, especially when things go awry, walking around angry and frustrated will not help you or your marriage. But if you communicate and use your partner as an advisor, you will get to much better places faster. The third point is, as the saying goes, perception is reality. Be honest with yourself. Err on the side of caution and set appropriate expectations. Allowing assumptions leads to painful consequences. And the fourth and final point that this person says is carve out time every week for your partner. So it's important to have some time during the week where you're not influenced or distracted by emails, text messages, voicemails, etc., so those are the four points which I, I, I found through my research that kind of summarized a bit of my experience, you know, going through, you know, developing a company and trying to integrate family and business together. Now, an article that I found that was interesting 
was an article from Ann Fisher from CNN Money that talks that was talking about you know managing you know marriage with starting a business. So I'll read you a couple you know of um, of text or uh, quotes from that article, which I found very interesting. So the first quote was saying the following: A marriage in which the business is the biggest baby, Councillor Landis says. The marriage has to be stronger than most other marriages. It needs better communication skills, better conflict resolution skills, better specific planning skills, and a lot more resiliency. And the article continues by saying, it seems that despite the pitfalls, plenty of entrepreneurial couples are meeting that challenge. And that ironically, that shared struggle of creating company can make a good established marriage even better. Now, something else that they say in this article is the following. For one thing, there's no evidence that the divorce rate among business owners is any higher than average. Moreover, according to a recent survey by the investment advisory firm Newberger Berman, 42% of CEOs of fast-growing startup say that running their own companies has had a positive effect on their relationship with their spouses or domestic partners. That is significantly higher than the 32% who said business ownership had caused trouble at the home front. The good news, says Kelly Dietz Baker, whose husband started a business less than a year into their marriage, it's been harder for us than I anticipated, but I think it has made our marriage stronger. I think I understand him better than I would otherwise. Now here is the final quote I would like to read from this article from Miss Ann Fisher from CNN Money. And it goes as follows. Neely Satch, a marriage counselor in Rockford, who has worked with hundreds of entrepreneurial couples, believes that business owners may have some distinct advantages when it comes to making a marriage work. Entrepreneurs are perceived as loners, she notes, but they also have a strong drive to succeed and are skilled at working towards a goal. So any business owner who makes a happy home life a distinct goal, she believes, is quite likely to achieve it. So you see, it is possible to start a business, to invest a lot of time in it, and have a successful marriage and a successful family life. Of course, there's some, you know, some that succeed and some that fail. I hope through this experience sharing that I've done through, with my life, has helped to find you know, some information that can maybe help you have you know, to better maybe combine both worlds. You see, in life, it's very simple. We just need to better communicate and to have better expectations with one another. And we need to understand, and what I think made my life much easier, and I'm going to repeat it again, is that we truly believe, me and my wife, that we're living the one life, and it's the same life. And the decisions we take and the, the, the trajectory we decide to take is what makes both of us and our family happy. Sometimes it could be good decisions, sometimes it could be wrong. But the bottom line is that we are together in sharing those experiences. And I think that's what makes a strong couple and that puts all the chances on our side to have a great family life. Never forget, there's an old saying that says that behind every successful person, there's a successful partner. I hope you truly enjoyed the show and that I was able to shed some light for all of you who are currently trying to manage business and their family lives. I hope you tune in next week as we tackle another important question on entrepreneurship. Everything we've done in these over 30 years are about that vision of personal computing. Keep on moving your dream forward because there is something magical about sticking to your dream longer than anyone around you thinks you have a right to stick to that dream. When you give everyone a voice and give people power, the system usually ends up in a really good place. It is really what you give the world that you get back from the world. One of the best things you can do is to spend some time each day thinking. Because what's the point of getting to the top of your mountain realizing you did the wrong things? Stay hungry, stay foolish.